It's happening again. Just when you thought it was all coming to an end, Brexit is kicking off all over again. Politicians are still arguing and debating about the UK's future relationship with the European Union. And right now, things are ramping up big time. The UK has been accused of ripping up its past agreements and going back on promises. And the EU is furious. And now some people are getting increasingly worried that we could still end up with a no-deal Brexit. That's a scenario many politicians are scared of because they think it could be really bad for the economy. But hang on a minute, didn't they already reach a deal on Brexit? So how is no deal Brexit even still possible? Okay, so here's where we're at. The whole Brexit process where the UK splits off from the EU, that whole thing is kind of like one long box set. Think of it like season one, season two, and season three of the greatest political saga of our time. In the first season, after the referendum, the arguments, the votes, and the election, we eventually ended up with this thing called the Withdrawal Agreement. It basically sets out the terms and conditions for Brexit to happen. Some people actually just call it the Divorce Bill, because that's pretty much what it is. Like for instance, the EU says, hey, you owe us money. And the Withdrawal Agreement says, sure, this is how the UK is gonna pay you back. All that stuff has now been agreed on. It took a few years and a lot of arguments, but they finally signed the agreement last year and technically the UK has now left the EU. Okay, so that's the end of the first season of Brexit. After decades of will they, won't they, Britain finally leaves the EU. Bye -bye. But surely it can't be that easy. There's still the big cliffhanger of how it's all actually gonna work out, if it does work out at all. So that takes us up to the second season, which is where we are right now. And it's kind of a weird transition period while both sides figure out what to do. So although we've officially left the EU, most of the concrete changes have yet to happen. And the transition period is our chance to figure things out before we do the full Brexit. But there's a deadline, right? The transition period runs out at the end of 2020. And then we're straight into the Brexit finale, whether we like it or not. So that takes us right up to season three. This is like the final decision, the end of the show, the big finale, where, let's be honest, we're all wondering whether the main characters are gonna even survive this far. So before we get to the third season, we've got to make some decisions. Like, okay, we might not want to be part of the EU anymore, but do we still want a trade deal or any kind of special relationship? Do we want trade tariffs and border controls? Or are we going to be more like close partners? This decision is called the Future Relationship Agreement. Basically, it's just like a massive trade deal. And that's the bill that's still being debated right now. But whatever happens, we only have until the end of the year to come up with a plan even if the negotiations fail and we end up without any trade deal at all. If they do fail, that's when this thing called no deal Brexit kicks in. Basically, that's the proper hardcore Brexit, leaving the EU completely without any special arrangements for trading. But here's the really confusing bit. People were talking about no deal Brexit a year ago, right? We made videos about it. There were all these warnings and predictions about how no deal Brexit could cause chaos and lead to food shortages and traffic jams and blah, blah, blah. The thing is, now that the first stage of Brexit is complete, the divorce bill, that means no deal would now actually be a bit different because there's some stuff we've decided already. Like the UK and EU have already agreed certain things, right? So even if they don't get a trade deal, we can still fall back on the kind of basic withdrawal agreement we signed before. Let me give you an example. This is the only land border between the UK and the EU. On one side, you've got Northern Ireland, which is part of the UK. And to the south, there's the Republic of Ireland, which is still a full member of the EU. One of the reasons people were worried about no deal Brexit was that if we don't have a trade deal with the EU, that could mean border checks and security controls were suddenly introduced along this crossing. And that would be a problem because this border has been disputed for years and seen a lot of conflict. At the moment, it's usually pretty peaceful because although there is technically a border, it's basically invisible. Like you can drive through it without getting stopped. But if that suddenly changes, it could lead to serious trouble. So part of the reason No Deal Brexit was so unpopular was because people wanted to keep carrying on with this peaceful arrangement in Northern Ireland. Okay, so along comes the withdrawal agreement, the bit that they signed last year. And this agreement says, we know this border crossing could be a problem, right? So whatever happens in the future, even if we don't get a trade deal, even if this agreement is as much as we ever get, we'll agree here and now that we'll never put up security checks along this border crossing. So where does that leave us now? Well, when people say we could still leave with no deal, 
they are kind of right. Like, if we do want a trade deal, we're running out of time. And if they fail to agree on anything, that's where the no-deal Brexit kicks in. And let's not underplay this. If the UK leaves without a trade deal, then we automatically fall back on the most basic international trade rules. That would mean some industries could suddenly find themselves having to pay big financial tariffs just to bring products in and out of the UK. So whether you're in favour of it or not, leaving without a trade deal could still be a massive change. And many economists say it could be damaging for both sides. But equally, when people talk about no deal Brexit, that means a different thing now to what it meant last year. Because some aspects, like the border in Northern Ireland, have already been agreed in the withdrawal agreement. Okay, so now if you don't think that's complicated enough, here's the punchline. There's a chance, probably a small chance, that everything I just said could be wrong. That's because even though we've already signed the withdrawal agreement, and even though we've already ruled out the possibility of a hard border in Northern Ireland, and we thought we'd sorted that out once and for all, what if the British government just ignore it? What if they decide to break their own Brexit agreement? Okay, so admittedly, that's unlikely they'll throw the whole thing out, right? I mean, it did take them ages to come up with the withdrawal agreement, so there's probably some stuff in it they actually like. But the British government has said it wants to make some small changes that critics say would override it. We'll do another video on exactly what those changes might be and how they could affect Brexit. But where does this leave the question about no deal? Well, in theory, the withdrawal agreement prevents some of the effects of no deal. But if the government is prepared to overrule parts of that agreement, then to be honest, anything is possible.